I'm really delighted to be here uh, and to talk about redesigning food, which is something I've become interested in, particularly since my work in the mid-2000s in South Africa, where I was funded by the Gates Foundation to look at developing new drugs and vaccines for diseases of poverty and became sensitive to, as many of us did at that time, a parallel health problem that is related to the growing affluence or at least access to resources in the developing world and shows up as a problem of food. And particularly, it's a problem of micronutrient deficiency, uh, other kinds of problems that we've typically associated with the developed world, like diabetes, uh, began to uh, show up at an alarming rate in the developing world. And there was this parallel problem of the environment uh, that was uh, visually uh, arresting. And it's just been growing over the last 10 years. It was so uh, striking to me that I decided to change what I did. I had a pharmaceutical and kind of applied math background and began to uh, think about food and think about a different kind of an environment where I could be co-creating with the public, as many of you do through the internet, but with the kind of material things that I do in a cultural lab in Paris called the Laboratoire, which we opened in the fall of 2007, where I and others do experiments with leading artists and designers at Frontiers of Science, and uh, we ask questions with the public. And the environment is set up such that if there are ideas that have resonance, they can move quickly out and hopefully um, have an impact. One of the early ideas I was very interested in was, of course, food. And so I was struck that we should be able to package food and drink as nature packages uh, fruit and vegetables. So if you look at a, an orange, you've got the white pulp that you eat, and then you have this orange rind that you typically tear off and throw into the environment, and it becomes part of the environment. It's even more obvious with a coconut clearly the best bottle ever created of water. And how is it created, it, or how is it made? It's made of a, an edible endoderm, this white uh, coconut that, that we can uh, eat, obviously. And then it's, that is, is, is surrounded by a solid endocarp, or the shell, that we tear off and throw into the environment and it biodegrades. And so I wanted to create a general way of packaging food and drink uh, like this and began to collaborate with a French designer named Francois Azenbourg. We did an exhibition in Paris in 2010, and what's come of it is a platform of food that we call WikiFood. And WikiFood eliminates plastic from packaging for both health and environmental reasons. And to give you some sense of it. Unfortunately, I couldn't get it through the customs to hand out to you wiki foods here today, but I'll show you pictures. Uh, so here's a wiki water, which we're developing in the context of work we continue to do in South Africa. It's surrounded by coconut, uh, so there's three things that make up the skin. Uh, a food particle, an insoluble food particle, which is typically charged uh, naturally. Uh, calcium or magnesium or some kind of uh, multivalent uh, nutritive ion and then a little bit of polysaccharide from some vegetable source. And this creates an electrostatic gel that you can then layer, like your stratum cordium, the uh, superficial layer of your skin, uh, has 15 or so layers of, uh, of uh, dead cells, actually, uh, that are sort of dried. Uh, we use food particles, and that gives this functional packaging uh, nature to the skin. It uh, keeps out pathogens and uh, lowers water and oxygen transport, but it's also really good. So you can bite into it and drink it, or you can stick a straw into it and drink it and throw the rest into, um, into nature. Uh, we have wiki pearls of yogurt and lots of other things. And so here's a little grape of uh, yogurt, and you can just pop it in your mouth. The skin is cherry. Uh, uh, you can um, have wiki pearls of ice cream, so the first commercial product that just launched this summer in Paris is a Wiki, Wiki Pearl of ice cream. So what's interesting here is that the ice cream, when it comes out of the freezer, it uh, melts more slowly because the skin uh, has a thermal uh, protection. And as it melts, it stays in the skin. So it's the first ice cream that doesn't melt in your hand. Um, you can actually put it in the microwave and heat it up, uh, although it will blow up if you heat it too long. Um, and uh, what's uh, uh, these sell in um, a kind of a 
uh, coconut uh, shell, if you will, in the sense that it's pure cellulose, and so you can toss it into nature and it will just biodegrade in 15 to 30 days, and it has a uh, recycled paper with water-soluble ink. And uh, that product started to sell at Wiki Bar in uh, central Paris, and will, at the end of the year, with uh, Stonyfield, uh, begin, which is a yogurt, uh, organic yogurt, frozen yogurt um, company in the United States, begin to sell in Whole Foods. Um, and so we continue to uh, diversify. I'm passionately interested in this goal of having an end to the era of plastic in food packaging. And uh, at the same time, I'm interested in the food itself and in the question, what is sort of the minimum food mass that I can... Um, deliver and have all my essential nutrients and a terrific uh, sensual experience. And that's led to this notion of breathable uh, food, which began as an experiment, again at the Laboratoire, uh, where I was working with the chef Thierry Marx uh, in 2007. And initially, we were uh, looking at breathable chocolate, so pure organic chocolate without the calories, and uh, then have continued to work on many different kinds of um, products. Today, uh, the products sell in about 20,000 stores in the United States, and we're, we're still sort of diversifying, trying to understand the family. And so we have energy and sleep and immunity and um, sports uh, and uh, other kinds of pro chocolate, obviously, uh, products. Uh, ultimately, we are moving from uh, a plastic device to a biodegradable pod device and ultimately an edible uh, pod device. And so you have these little uh, inhale, uh, sort of like a uh, breathable fork, if you will. And you've got these little capsules, which are biodegradable. And inside, you have uh, some powder. Now, if you just took a little spray and sort of sprayed chocolate in your mouth, you'd get very, very little uh, mass of uh, nutrient or of chocolate. But in a solid form, you can deliver, again, uh, the essential, um, all the essential vitamins uh, for your daily um, for your daily. Uh, your daily dose. And so we are also looking at much more visual and sensorial experiences in uh, breathable food or air food. Uh, the WAF is something that I designed at the laboratoire with uh, Marc Bretio, who is a, another French designer. And what's interesting here is you put in your favorite drink. Uh, could be orange juice or a martini or um, whatever it is. And, and then when the, the device uh, the carafe is kind of pushed on the side. This is Massimo Bottura, uh, one of the leading chefs in the world in um, Modena, uh, who is making a, so an orange cloud over the top of a uh, duck reduction. Uh, and so there's all kinds of experimentation that's been happening with this. What's fascinating is that the cloud uh, delivers, so if it's a martini, you have martini cloud uh, with a special straw, but there's essentially no alcohol, there's essentially no calories, about 40 microliters uh, in a glass of sipped uh, uh, martini or um, orange uh, cloud. So this has been picked up by the coffee community, uh, among others, as a way of discerning between coffees and uh, leads me to uh, invite you to an experiment um, that we will be doing for all who are interested in just a little bit and to the final topic that I want to talk about. So moving in the direction of uh, the ephemeral, I have been interested in uh, the sensorial as a, as a way of communicating in sensorial ways. And so I'm sort of fascinated to be here amongst you doing things that are very unlike what I do. But now I'm doing something which is sort of much along the lines of a wired audience in that we're exploring the notion of a third dimension in global communication which is olfactory, and obviously, in a sort of very and famously, a lot of work has been done on olfactory transmission, and we find ourselves kind of um, being blown away by Parmesan clouds and other kinds of um, clouds, because in general, uh, or aromatic signaling is um, not very clean. And so we've spent time with a couple of my students at Harvard University, one of whom is here is Rachel Field, who's clearly the hero for me of my weekend and of this week, um, if not of the year, uh, for having made what you will uh, experience in just a little bit. Uh, but we've been developing uh, the O-Phone, uh, which we exhibited in Paris this last summer uh, with coffee partners around this notion of a virtual coffee. Uh, but 
This is the latest generation. It's just being shared here today. It was literally just put together this, uh, this last weekend. Um, and uh, what we are interested in here is this not only uh, world in which any tweet, any email, any internet site, any form of entertainment that has any kind of a olfactory dimension, if you have this O phone, and frankly, the O phone is really just little O chips that go inside the O phone right now, and what you'll see in the other breakout room has uh, the potential of 340 different aromas, but we're moving in the direction of O chips with over 50,000. Uh, aromas. And so if you have that little, it could be in your coat, it could be in your phone, it could be in your microwave oven, it doesn't really matter where it is, but right now we're going to be showing it to you in a little phone. Uh, so yes, you can have that uh, olfactory dimension, but what I'm really interested in, and it gets to what I'll invite you to do here in just a little bit, is this notion of a purely olfactory uh, conversation. Uh, so it's not like I would say to you um, in olfactory language, hey, let's go get a drink after the conference, uh, but it would be a much more sensual kind of uh, communication, uh, more connected to the image I showed a little bit ago of the animal. And so clearly we survived as a species by that kind of communication, I think, over the last 20 years because of this very successful global information uh, revolution, uh, our minds, our, our brains, literally are quite saturated with visual and auditory um, information. And so it's fascinating to me to kind of think if we could break out of that and create this uh, aromatic language where we can deliver, and that's the point of this object. And so just to be clear, when you go to use it, you need to get right up next to it. It's not like we're sending these big clouds everywhere. You're sending little letters olfactory letters that can be put together in words and sentences and ultimately paragraphs and maybe um, essays and novels at some point. So what literally we're going to do here uh, for anybody who's interested is invite you to the uh, virtual uh, coffee bar, um, which is, uh, and David and everybody can show you where that is. Some of you started to play around with this um, uh, before we were ready a little bit ago, so um, hopefully we'll be ready for you now. And I want to give you some instructions because it's all very quite, you know, some of it's a little bit fragile. So if you want to make it easy, uh, just go to the otrax.com, uh, uh, which is up, and uh, you go to otrax.com and you choose a coffee. Uh, and you, uh, so we have a couple, we didn't have time to get four, but you have a couple different coffees, a couple different chocolates, a couple different caramels, a couple different nuts, and so you choose one. And so that's your uh, vocabulary that you're going to create your sentence, uh, or if you will, your aroma symphony with. And so then you, you're going to compose four different measures, and so you begin with, you know, your first measure, and then hit play, and go to your second measure, hit play, and you can kind of create, so you can start out with a coffee, and then go coffee, chocolate, nut, caramel, and then you go nut, and then you can end with a coffee, or whatever you want to do, and then you submit it, and um, you can recompose it if you got nervous and didn't do what you wanted to do, and then it, you, you send it, and when it goes to London, uh, it will go over here, it'll go to the O phone, uh, and it will also go to Paris, where we've got uh, some friends uh, who are making for you uh, virtual fruit tarts. Um, and so you will get here also virtual fruit tarts. And uh, when you come up to the bar, um, you will, well, you also have to uh, put a name in there just so we know uh, who you, uh, what it is. And when you come up to the uh, virtual coffee uh, bar, there will be these four phones. And I invite you to uh, first try the virtual fruit tart. Uh, which will have an Android in front of it. And so you go to the Android, and you find um, really any symphony and just kind of play it. And uh, the, the, the fruit tart, I find, is, is uh, quite um, strong and distinctive, and you can understand it pretty clearly. And you'll see the symphony kind of run in front of your eyes, and you can smell it, but you do need to get right up next to it uh, and, um, and smell your symphony. When you do it, there's the issue of saturation, right? And so you, you need to, um, I find begin to smell, and then sort of step away, and then smell again, and sort of kind of get used to what the, you know, this is all new. Um, and then go to uh, one of the other phones, and you'll find your virtual um, coffee symphony and play it. And, uh, or you can do it, this all at, we have an iPad where you can design it right there at the table. Um, now, it, some of you already were saying, gosh, I don't really, my nose is not super, um, uh, uh, gifted this morning or whatever, and so you don't need to do it. And, uh, and, but uh, right next to it, there's a much more powerful um, cloud experience with the WAF, 
uh, where we have a, a coffee, caramel, nut, and chocolate. Um, and, and here, you just tip the waff to its side. It will, by ultrasound, create this cloud that will pour into a cup, and with a special straw, you sip it out, and you can kind of create a four clouds, and you have a cloud uh, of uh, coffee mocha, or you just put your straw right into the waff and drink it itself. Uh, and if you then ask the people behind the counter, they will give you uh, one of these little um, coffee mochas that are portable, uh, where you have the coffee mocha here, and you can kind of just uh, puff it into your mouth, and it all goes into your mouth, and um, and uh, it goes through customs. So that's the uh, that's the uh, uh, virtual uh, coffee bar, and the, this work was incubated in this sort of educational cultural. Uh, incubative environment of the laboratoire. Uh, we're opening the new laboratoire in uh, Cambridge next to MIT and Harvard uh, next June. Uh, uh, the commercial uh, products have been uh, spun into a company called Quantum Designs, uh, which is based um, in Cambridge, uh, Massachusetts. And um, that's it. So I invite you all to go breathe some coffee. Thank you very much. So thank you, David. Um, so after this session, not yet, there will be virtual drinks and virtual French tarts in um, the networking room over there. The, um, it's very generous of you to make this all possible. This is kind of a coffee store I've never seen before. Um, but you have a serious day job. You're kind of a, a professor. You have developed serious medical devices. So tell us just in a minute about the medical device that a lot of this research came from. Uh, my early work uh, related to developing uh, inhaled uh, insulin for eliminating injections um, in diabetes, which was a big goal in the 1990s. Uh, we uh, had the protein revolution and then realized we had to inject everything. And so there was this big search to how could we not do that. And so we developed special particles and... Uh, created a company, and this made it through phase three with Eli Lilly, but as many may know here, uh, inhaled insulin uh, had all kinds of issues related to the fact that um, insulin is something that one out of eight healthcare dollars right now are going towards diabetic treatment, and this is a lifelong uh, uh, trauma uh, for many people, and while people in the clinical trials would not give up their inhalers, it was such a uh, thing for them, nevertheless for insurers and medical doctors, the fear that long term what was going to happen led to insurance issues, and so that um, is unfortunately not in uh, the public hands right now, but that's where I started. So you are the true Renaissance man bridging science and arts. I don't know if I'm the true man, but I, I am definitely more true than the man who was just presented a bit ago, that's for sure. All right, well, we look forward to trying your virtual drinks. Right. Thank you very Thank much, you, David Edwards. Thank you very much.